Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Medical Alley Association podcast series, Leadership Through a Crisis. Joining us today is president of Best Buy Health, Ashish Saxena. Ashish, thank you for joining us. Why don't you start by introducing yourself to our listeners? Hi, my name is Ashish Saxena. I'm president of Best Buy Health uh, and a member on the Medical Alley Association board. And we are so glad to have you on that board of directors. Let's kick it off by talking about when the seriousness of this pandemic really started to sink in with you. Yeah, this was one of the more challenging environments within which I was processing how to operate. And the reason being that this was not an episodic event that uh, happened. Uh, there was a drip, drip, drip of information. Uh, there was a degree of uncertainty. It was not very clear what was noise, what was signal. Um, and so, so first and foremost, there was no specific moment when the gravity of the, the situation hit me. But what was very clear was that this was unprecedented and it did require um, uh, skills and capabilities and frameworks to learn over, over the years of working around decision making within uncertainty. Um, so I would say it was, uh, it, was a, it was a process that I had to go through and trying to decode uh, and trying to develop some strategies around it. And so when that started to take place, did your role have to change at all? Yes. Uh, first and foremost, every single time uh, something like this happens, and of course this was, uh, uh, this was extraordinary, but there have always been dislocations in businesses and economy and life. Uh, what was unique about this was uh, that it was touching every aspect of everyday life. Uh, I was worried about it personally. Um, uh, I was worried about it professionally, and I was worried about it from a community perspective. So let me just take a minute on each of those, uh, because I think that brings together how my role changed. Uh, personally, uh, it was very clear that uh, you didn't want to get this disease, uh, that this was bad. You didn't want to get it. You didn't want anybody you loved to get it. You didn't want your colleagues, your friends, your family, your neighbors, uh, anybody you knew to get it. This was a bad thing. So a lot of uh, brain power was going into figuring out how to stay, stay collectively safe. So that was one piece of thing going on. Second was it was also, uh, at least at that time, my prevailing point of view was that there is going to be a serious dis dislocation to business, but more importantly, there is going to be a recession, a long, shallow recession at the tail of it. And therefore, professionally, we're trying to think through uh, how to separate out from the uh, rest of our competition and become a company that thrives uh, and does takes good decisions um, uh, within, within that kind of an environment. So professionally, it was clear that you, you had to rethink it. This was a new normal. And in community, which I think was by far the most important of them all, was that if this dislocation in the macro economy is going to be long and enduring, uh, it, was, it was clear that the community will feel it. And when communities feel a sustained long downturn, um, you know, the consequences are very significant. So what it needed was my role to step all the way back and think through all these pieces, both professionally and personally and in the community. And it became very clear to me it was all about trying to define the new normal, trying to define how to lead and take all my key stakeholders through that journey to that new normal. And then your role was basically to accelerate that transformation. That's what it became. And I think actually in an environment like this, everybody's role is to accelerate the transformation that, uh, that you, are, you are part of. Uh, it's just that to be very clear what that transformation is. But once you know that, uh, there was nothing other than um, let's move quickly through this. Speed is of essence and try and get to a place for which you can manage through this environment. And how about Best Buy? Did they have to pivot? And did their role in the marketplace have to change as well? Uh, Best Buy is, uh, in all honesty, a very inspired company. Uh, we think deeply, our leaders think deeply and long about uh, our customers, our employees, our community, our business, our various stakeholders. Um, and therefore, we stepped back uh, as, uh, as a leadership team and looked at all aspects of it. You know, what role do we play and how the role is changing in the life of us, in the life of our employees, in our, in our role within the community. And in each of those buckets of stakeholders, uh, we had to take some key decisions. When it came to life of customers, it was extraordinarily clear to us that the role of technology in everyday life was even more important 
um, to enrich life, to lead a quality life. And therefore, our job was to make sure that these technology products and services reach our customers quickly and safely. And therefore, that did require us to rethink how our operating model, how our stores would function or not function, how our digital infrastructure would work, how we would create this new paradigm called curbside uh, and then curbside with appointments. So there's a lot of innovation that was done on how the core retail operating model worked to be able to deliver on what our customers so uniquely needed at this time. Uh, so that was, that, was, that was happening in the, in, around the life of customers. Uh, around the life of employees, also it was very important that this is, uh, this is a new way of working. And this working remotely was not just about working remotely. It was also about working differently uh, so, that, so that remote working was effective. Uh, it changed what we work on. It changed priorities. It changed how we work. Um, and, and, uh, and, the, and the acute focus that we had on health and well-being, including mental health of our employees, became became quite important. I think the part that we spent most time thinking, or we still think about, is how to recreate serendipity in a virtual environment. Because you know, in the earlier world, you could just walk around the corridors and meet people, and interesting new thoughts and ideas emerged when you interacted. In the virtual world, which is already calendared and structured, how do you create serendipity? So there was a lot of thought done in terms of how to operate in this, in this new environment, which could, be, uh, which could go on for a longer time than anybody thought. And the third was, even in the community, again, we kept asking ourselves, what constructive role could we play uh, to foster um, a different environment within which you all live and operate? And I think that's why it's done a tremendous amount of work and at least uh, cast light on topics that, uh, that are very endearing to us, you know, racial equality and gender discrimination, and climate change, and even encouraging innovation. And, and in all of those attributes, uh, Best Buy and Best Buy viewers have, uh, have tried, to, tried to play a constructive role. So it, 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 had, it required a fairly holistic way to think about business, not, not in just a, just a small sliver way of business economics. I want to go back to something you mentioned about mental health. Best Buy seems to have really stepped into the sphere of dealing with the mental health of not only their employees, but the senior population, too, during this time. Can you talk to me a little bit about that as well? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, uh, one of my responsibilities is to run uh, Best Buy Health, which is uh, a component of Best Buy's overall company that is focused on serving seniors. Uh, what, what we were doing was for the, for the last couple of years that we've been doing uh, Best Buy Health uh, was trying to provide technology-based solutions and services to help seniors age independently in their homes. And then to also help others uh, who want to see that happen, like cares and providers and so on. What, uh, within that, therefore, the underlying thought was how do we make home a site of care? Because uh, you know, for the life of senior health and everyday life is so intermingled that, um, that home becomes an increasingly important node. So therefore, all our pursuit thus far was how to make home a site of care. COVID did two things, uh, especially for the life of seniors. One, it made becoming home a site of care incredibly important because seniors were a vulnerable population because most uh, carry multiple chronic conditions and for them to step out um, into a COVID-infested invested environment was hard. Uh, so first was to make sure that the home actually becomes a robust site of care. But the second was uh, an even greater emphasis on preventing loneliness and social isolation. Uh, because all of a sudden, interactions became virtual and the physical touch was becoming that much, that much less. So what we do is we have a model that we call high-tech and high-touch in how we serve seniors. So high-tech is, of course, all the technology. But high-touch is that we have these ring of caring centers where there are very trained people, people with social work backgrounds uh, who would spend time, who would reach out, who would be accessed, uh, and the senior would spend time with these social workers. And I tell you, those, those interactions were rich, uh, long sometimes, uh, and, and, and important. So for us, uh, that became a very important component of the architecture, how we support seniors, which was just the human touch, just then our ability to just reach out, just that ability to respond uh, both to the senior and the caregiver who is anxious about the senior's health. So I think it was this high touch part of our high tech and high touch infrastructure that became just incredibly important. 
So you lead your team over at Best Buy Health. And as you mentioned before, you also help lead uh, this industry as a member of the Medical Alley Association Board of Directors. In that role, you really get an intimate view of what's going on with this entire industry and how it responded to COVID-19. I'd love to hear your thoughts on how this industry responded. Has healthcare been transforming as a result? And get your overall perspective of this situation as it's developing. Yeah, I, I think uh, COVID did not accelerate the transformation. It just reminded us that the transformation had already begun and we just didn't realize that. Uh, so to some extent, uh, this is the transformation. This is uh, uh, what the healthcare uh, transformation was always defined to be, which is home becomes a site of care, which use technology and virtual constructs so that you move away from only facilities-based, high-cost care sites to, to more virtual, more digital, and so on and so forth. So we always, all the elements of what a healthcare transformation ought to be was moving along slowly and we were in that transformation and what COVID did was a put the spotlight and say you're not waiting for some transformation to stop you are in the transformation and either you move at the pace that now COVID had accelerated or you're going to get left behind so first and foremost I think uh, which is why uh, I find the the thought process within Medical Alley Association very rewarding because what it is basically trying to make the larger point that when such a large sector, 18% of GDP, is going through a massive structural transformation, it is hard to do it alone. It's hard to be a lonesome operator. Right? You need to partner with others. You need to collaborate. You need to um, co-create uh, innovations and ideas and, and protocols and processes that benefit a large community. Uh, and I think in many ways, I find the role that Medical Alley Association plays or this community within which we operate plays is this role of, uh, of uh, strange bedfellows coming together and, and, and trying to create new innovations. I think Best Buy Health, for example, is working with several of our, uh, of our big progressive entities, both big and small, both established and startups, that are, uh, that, are, that are attacking some piece of the transformation with the eye how to accelerate that. Um, and, and it is showing up in every aspect of it, not just from the business. For example, I mean, employees, we work with Bind, as an example, in another very progressive company in the community and completely redefine uh, how our employees uh, access health healthcare. And uh, so I, I think at the heart of this movement and at the heart of uh, what Medical Alley Association's value I see every single day is this ability to cross-connect is the ability to get uh, companies big and small to work together to saying how can we collectively accelerate this transformation are there aspects of the transformation that covid-19 maybe helped accelerate or push a little bit that you see being irrevocably changed well um like in any other major dislocation um and this one being perhaps once in a lifetime type of dislocation it is clear that a few things happen at the same time one is uh, I believe that this is the birthing of a new normal. That is, we are not going to go back in its entirety to the ways of yesterday. Uh, more importantly, however, it is also an opportunity to reimagine the world we want. Because when the, when the environment is so shaken up and a new normal is emerging, uh, progressive companies, progressive leaders uh, have an opportunity to cast that in ways that best benefit society. Um, so to, to that extent, what Best Buy Health is trying to do is trying to take this core idea that home needs to be a site of care, an important site of care, especially for vulnerable populations, people, either you know, seniors with chronic conditions or those with, with uh, chronic ailments and so on, for whom access to healthcare is periodic, repeatable, and high frequency. Uh, if for them, home could become a site of care, it would have tremendous, tremendous improvement in their quality of life. It also so happens that when you use virtual tools, even the cost to serve goes down. So it's actually good for all. And therefore, all that Best Buy Health is trying to do in a sliver of this healthcare transformation is work itself and, and together with its partners to make home an increasingly important site of care um, by providing tools, technologies, platforms, resources for example you know geek squad is one of the largest distributed tech workforces that goes into people's homes to install technologies to outfit homes so that they can actually become site of care and so on and so forth but everything we're doing is with that 
core belief that home is going to become an increasingly important site of care. And we need to make sure that home is equipped with the right set of technologies and services, as well as the healthcare industry is actually able to remotely support uh, people in their homes. So that's the piece uh, that we believe in. We think that this is a lasting shift and not just because the mind of the customer has changed and the embracing of technologies has gone up, but also the regulatory structure has changed, the policies have become more supportive, new uh, reimbursement codes have got created, new business models have come. Uh, so there's, there's a real tailwind uh, towards this movement and, uh, and, and we believe in it very strongly. And I'd like to close out by shifting to talking about your personal experiences with COVID. I've spoken with many people who have had sleepless nights, meetings at 4 a.m. What would you say was your greatest challenge and how have you overcome it? I'm not sure if I've overcome it, but let me, uh, uh, the, you know, there were first, there was this initial set of challenges, uh, which was just adapting to this new model. I think uh, suddenly life became 30 minute meetings, one after the other in a virtual setting, constantly sitting in front of uh, the laptop and the camera and, uh, and, and at the end of the day, just being completely exhausted. Um, so all of those were issues, and you start backing those by throwing in breaks and, and so on and so forth. But I think my biggest uh, challenge was um, missing out on serendipity. Uh, I used to thoroughly enjoy walking around the corridors and meeting colleagues and having that informal, inspired moment um, and, uh, and lots of decisions and ideas and creativity and relationships used to get fostered by that. And all of a sudden, we were in an environment which was completely calendar. And serendipity was conspicuous by its absence. So I think uh, that's what I miss the most. That's what um, you suddenly feel constantly connected and constantly talking and yet quite lonesome because you are in a, in a room and, 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 and so on and so forth. So um, I think what I've missed the most uh, uh, is serendipity. Uh, and I'm still trying to figure out how to recreate that in a virtual environment. And did all of that make you grow as a leader in any way? I think grow in the sense uh, I had to change my velocity. Uh, in this, we, there is now, there's a real premium on who moves faster, how quickly can you reshape the new normal? How quickly can you transform both who you are, how you operate, as well as the businesses that you run and, and a part of? Uh, so I think it's the velocity that had to change. It's, it's hard um, because you know, we all work very hard, uh, but hard work was not enough anymore. Uh, it was about, about taking decisions where good enough sometimes was fine, as long as it allowed you to move with great velocity. And that's a, that's a different paradigm. Uh, so I think it's a speed as a variable that changed quite a bit. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Medical Alley podcast series, Leadership Through a Crisis. To make sure you don't miss a single episode, be sure to subscribe to our newsletter, follow us on all of our social media channels, and visit us at medicalalley.org.